Monica Fitzgibbons is up next, but first, some news to tell you about. This week, we received reports from a parish in the Diocese of Buffalo, New York, that may indicate a supernatural event involving a consecrated host. Diocesan leadership has apparently declined to investigate the matter further. Now, the church has a long history of investigating Eucharistic miracles or purported miracles. In 1996, while an auxiliary bishop in Buenos Aires, Jorge Bergoglio, now Pope Francis, ordered photographs and analysis of a consecrated host that appeared to be bleeding. In the end, that analysis determined that the bloody host was actually human heart muscle. And as recently as 2015, here in the United States, the Diocese of Salt Lake City investigated a similar phenomenon where a consecrated host was bleeding. In that case, what witnesses thought to be blood was actually mold. Now, Eucharistic miracles are rare, but they do occur, at times bringing a renewed devotion to the real presence of Christ, the Catholic teaching that the consecrated host is not a symbol, but Christ truly present, body, soul, and divinity. Joining me now is an eyewitness and a former parishioner at the parish where this all happened, at St. Vincent de Paul Parish in Springbrook, New York, in the embattled Diocese of Buffalo. Lisa Benzer is the Director of Religious Education, and Mike Bentz is a theologian and former parishioner. Thank you both for being here. Now, as I understand it, in mid-November, a host was inadvertently dropped on the ground at Mass, and a church deacon placed it in a receptacle in water to be properly disposed of later. Then on Friday, November 30th, the Eucharistic minister noticed something unusual about the host, and we have the image up now. Lisa, you were among the first eyewitnesses what did you see here, and what did you think? Just to clarify, I was there about 15 to 20 minutes after the Eucharistic miracle mm. uh, happened. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I will tell you my account. So, uh, Father Carl had the Eucharist in the oblation in the ablution cup, and in the ablution cup was uh, it was where Jesus was. And so I went to the rectory and I actually saw Jesus at that time, what I thought was Jesus. There was a presence there. Hmm. And I instantly, when I saw him, I kneeled down to the ground and I was in awe. It was, hmm. it was absolutely fantastic to me. It was so simple but so majestic at the same time. Hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. it now, was Lisa, beautiful. So, some are saying that the red color there that you saw, that uh, some have suggested it was blood, that that red coloring might be lipstick or something similar. Do you buy that? Well, I, I don't really, and I'll tell you why. I'm a lipstick wearer myself, um, and lipstick is it has the same properties of color throughout, you know, even mm -hmm. if you put water on it or whatever. Right. Whereas what I found is that the color of the pictures that you see, that it was a bright red mm. initially, and then it changed to a maroonish color. Oh. And my observation of that is that it would have been exposed to the oxygen and that is why there was a change in the color. And with lipstick, that wouldn't happen. Now, Lisa, this matter was immediately brought to the attention of the pastor at the parish at St. Vincent de Paul, Father Carl Loeb, who you mentioned. He, too, was deeply affected. He reported this to the two bishops in the diocese, Bishop Richard Malone and his auxiliary, Edward Gross. Father Loeb was instructed by both bishops to dispose of the host, that no investigation would be conducted. Uh, your reaction to that? Well, my reaction naturally was to uh, preserve Jesus and keep him intact. But I do believe that Jesus had a message for all of us. Mm. And that message is of hope, of love. And I believe that he presented himself in a way that was tangible for all people mm. so that people would come to him and I believe he was saying on the Feast of St. Andrew, which was November 30th, mm -hmm. come and see. Come mm -hmm. and see what I have in store for all of my people. In a time now where people are disgruntled with the Catholic faith, 
There's many people who have left the church. Mm. However, Jesus is saying, I am your leader. I am mm. your master. Come to me. Yeah. Lisa, and I thank I will you give for you that. Rest. I, I, I want to go to Mike Dens. Now, Mike is a theologian, a former parishioner at St. Vincent de Paul. Um, Mike, your reaction to the protocol of the diocese, why not investigate this? I'm not sure what the protocol is, but it would seem that uh, a bishop is responsible for investigating things like this in his diocese, the ordinary. Uh, and as you pointed out at the top, uh, that's what bishops normally do. They will look into anything that looks like it might be a credible miracle. Mm. Uh, so it was surprising to see that uh, yeah. they didn't even want to see it. Yeah, no, I, I was told the auxiliary bishop didn't even want to look at the pictures. Now, Mike, you are a director of evangelization and catechesis at another parish in the diocese. Could this have been a missed opportunity for evangelization and teaching about the real presence? And why do you think this might be occurring? Yeah, obviously, it's, uh, it could be a missed opportunity. Uh, it, something like this obviously is done by Christ to draw people closer to him, to mm. uh, help to uh, solidify people's faith. And mm. uh, if this indeed was uh, a Eucharistic miracle, um, this is a, a missed opportunity, and, and yeah. it's and I'm not I have no idea why it wasn't investigated. Um, we'll never know now, but at the same time, uh, so it was Christ disposed of. The, to, the, the the Eucharist was disposed of, correct? Yes. Hmm. And how are people there reacting, Mike? What are you hearing from the people in Buffalo? Has it had an effect on them? Yeah, it has had an effect on people. I, I do know that there are several people from uh, St. Vincent's that are affected just by seeing the pictures. And mm -hmm. all the people that I've talked to uh, in person and on social media uh, were affected by the pictures and were very disappointed that mm. it was disposed of instead of looked into. Yeah, well, it seems to me the people of Buffalo could use some good news right now. And um, this yeah. might have been this might have been it. Lisa Benser, Mike Dentz, thank you both for being here and for sharing this important story.